Whoa. <laughs> Picture this. You're sitting on a hillside in the Shire of Middle Earth. <laughs> yeah, okay, so I'm kicking off with a Lord of the Rings reference. Uh, just buckle up, it's only gonna get more nerdy from here. Uh, <laughs> it's dusk. Gandalf is beside you, the old wizard tamping down his pipe and smoking. A soft breeze brushes through the trees overhead as hobbits head off to bed in their little hobbit holes. And you turn and ask Gandalf something that nobody ever asked him in a book or in a movie. You've never seen this before. You say, where'd you get that hat? <laughs> it's an impressive hat. I mean, am I wrong? Uh, so he chuckles, strokes his wispy white beard, and then he starts a conversation. And I think this is the future of storytelling, when our stories start to tell themselves. So stories are important. They link us to thousands of years of history and to incredible potential futures. They allow us to empathize with people that we've never met and to glimpse the experiences of people who never existed. Our culture lives in our stories, our values, hopes, conflicts, fears, and dreams. Stories are the fingerprints of our society. And when we're all gone, we're gonna be leaving behind one thing, and it's our stories. So I'd like for you to take a moment and think about your favorite story of all time, the one that really gets you, your absolute favorite. Picture it in your head. So it could be Ulysses or Hamlet, Citizen Kane, Star Wars, uh, let's face it, for a lot of us, it's probably Star Wars. <laughs> now, are you thinking of ink on a page of paper? Are you thinking of patterns of light on a screen or ones and zeros on a hard drive? No. I'll bet that you're thinking of a moment in time, some amazing character or place or event, an experience that grabbed your emotions and never let go, not to this day. So most of our stories are delivered to us as books or films or video games, these things, but that's not what they are. These technologies, these books and films and video games, they're only lenses that bring our stories into focus. And a great tale is ultimately a combination of the story and the tools with which it's told. So in the last couple thousand years, our stories have become intertwined in our heads with the technology that we use to tell them. So the Gutenberg printing press was created around 500 years ago. Modern mass market novels and the way that we know them, they've only been around for about 300 years. Cinema has been around for 100 years or so. Augmented reality for 10. We've had video games for about 50 years. And we're supposed to get virtual reality this Christmas for a low, low price. And, uh, <laughs> I'm particularly looking forward to that. But an untested young man with a great destiny, squinting into a sunset, nay, a double sunset. <laughs> and <laughs> let's just make it twice as awesome. And dreaming of fighting the empire. Well, you know, that's something that's been around for 150,000 years, since human beings have been sitting around campfires and telling each other stories. Great artists are able to translate their stories through their chosen mediums. So you have great writers and great filmmakers and great computer programmers. They take what's in here and they give it to us out here in the world. But don't mistake the technology for the story. So I invite you to consider, what is the true soul of a story? If you strip away all that technology, you get rid of all the ink and the film and computer code, what do we have left? Well, I think the answer is a world, a complex web of interconnected people, places, and things, the experiences of characters and the unique physics of imaginary kingdoms being pulled by their own tidal forces, and all of it stemming from a human mind, all of it held up here in somebody's head. We've read, watched, listened to, and played our stories. We've interacted with all kinds of technology. But soon, I think our stories are going to, are going to speak to us 
naturally in the same way that we've spoken to each other and told each other stories for 150,000 years. So I've made a small, very experimental foray into this territory. Uh, Mayday Deep Space is a Portland-made iOS app in which the player literally answers a Mayday call from a character who's stranded on a derelict spaceship. So you use voice commands to speak to the character. And instead of controlling it like a video game with a joystick, you establish a partnership with this character, a dialogue in which the two of you, the character and player, are able to explore the story together. So this is a, my goal, was to make Mayday uh, an experience where I'll use a relatively new technology, speech recognition, to try and recreate the way that people tell each other the stories, the way that we actually interact with each other and have for 150,000 years. Because you see, each one of us is an intrinsic storyteller. We are born as experts with these amazing skills, like recognizing faces and gestures and body language. And I don't really know what that was about. <laughs> Maybe you guys are the experts, so you can tell me the, the, you know, afterwards. So we, of course, also are able to understand other people's emotions and convey our own feelings to other people. And, of course, we communicate verbally. And you know, these abilities, this is how we function. This is how we work together. It's why our societies work. And these amazing intellectual and emotional abilities also happen to be the raw language of story. So this is what I'm really excited about. Um, as it turns out, for the last 60 years or so, the field of artificial intelligence has been obsessed with solving these same problems. So scientists have their own names for this stuff, uh, speech recognition, face recognition, emotion and gesture recognition, a lot of recognitions. You've got to recognize a lot of stuff out there. There's also text-to-speech capabilities and the holy grail, natural language generation the ability for a machine to literally speak our language. Our machines are becoming more human-like, day by day, and like every tool, we are gonna use AI to tell stories. And in some cases, maybe a little too human-like, I don't know. So, around the campfire, with the trees above us, we communicate by speaking, gesturing, making facial expressions. We emote and scream and yell and laugh and cry and gesticulate, sometimes wildly and with no apparent purpose. And so will our stories. World War I, you're in a trench under mortar fire with your best friend, a soldier no older than 17. He's frozen in fear, tears streaking his face. And you know that if he stays where he's at, he'll die. Can you convince him to move? Can you shout with enough conviction? Can you beg him, remind him that you swore to his mother to keep him alive? Well, that's speech and gesture recognition. Now you're a secret agent, trying to cross a mountain border with a fake passport in one hand and your wounded partner hidden in the trunk of your car. Can you keep calm? Can you maintain a poker face as the border guard raises her assault rifle, studying your face with distrust and quizzing you about your background? Can you hide your fear and, hide, uh, your, and lie convincingly in order to save your partner's life? Well, that's emotion recognition. Now you're a worker in a refugee camp. A mother with a baby over her shoulder is begging you for water, but there's not enough for all the families that are there. Will you hear the desperation in her pleading voice as she negotiates with you? Would you empathize with her words and walk away from that experience with a new understanding of the world? Well, she'd be speaking to you via text-to-speech. And let's go back to that hillside with old Gandalf. Sitting in soft grass, you spend hours philosophizing about the war with Mordor and the nature of life and death and wizard hats. You could ask him about wizard hats, too. After that conversation is over, will you have learned something, about your, something real about yourself from an imaginary person? Well, that's natural language generation. This is amazing to me because 
what I'm seeing is that the most advanced and intelligent tools ever developed by humankind are going to be used to engage in a mode of storytelling interaction that's over 150,000 years old. There's some symmetry to that that I just find beautiful. So we've seen some initial advances in this area, especially within video games. So here's an example. You know, Outside of human interaction, though, face-to-face -face dialogue, we've never been able to interact naturally with our story worlds. And trust me, this is a, a screenshot from a game called Skyrim. It is one of my favorite video games of all time. And it's also a very complex uh, story world. But unfortunately, a lot of the interactions you have with the characters in this world can be a little bit um, awkward and sometimes even sad, because it appears that every guard in Skyrim used to be an adventurer like us. <laughs> and then they all took an arrow in the knee. <laughs> it takes you out of the experience, and it's just really pitiful. So <laughs> AI, the field of artificial intelligence, is moving storytelling forward by going back to the basics of human communication. Only instead of a few people swapping stories around a campfire with the trees swaying above, I see a future with seven billion people around a campfire, exploring stories that can tell themselves. Thank you.